Hey everyone, and welcome back to Vitruvian Art. I have another tutorial for you today, and today we're doing Malachite. Um, it's one that I've been wanting to do for quite a while, and it's St. Patrick's Day, so I thought today would definitely be the day to do something green. So, let us get started. I'll tell you what I've got here. I drew this up real quick because I want to put... Um, malachite pieces in here and then I'll finish it out and I'll doodle on it some more what I have here is I pulled out um, all the greens that I have basically in my um, fabric castell polychromos which is what I'm using uh, if you know or if you follow my channel um, you know that I I just got them not that long ago and I love them they're oil based and pretty awesome so we're going to start out with my lighter greens which is light green leaf green and emerald green and these are all pretty light to emerald green being like the medium tone i guess uh what we're going to do is we're going to talk about where our light source is coming from which is going to be up here so that i can keep it consistent across all of the gems and then, because malachite is a stone and it is not a gem, that means that our highlight will also be up here and our shadow will be down here. So what we're going to do is get a gradation of color from lights all the way down to about medium. And then we're going to start building in our shadows and our lines to go across our malachite. So, what we're going to do is kind of block in some of the colors so we have an undertone of what we want and this is my light green it's the lightest green i have in my polychromos one thing about me is that i do not like to cross brand like um if i'm using polychromos i don't like to use Blicks or Prismas or Margos with it because I'm really, really weird and I don't like mixing different medias. Even if it's just colored pencils, I don't like mixing brands because maybe I'm a little OCD. Anyway, this is Leaf Green. This is my second lightest green. So if you have other, other greens that you want to use, um, go for it. You're really just blocking in color at this point. And we're just trying to get that idea of value and shade and where everything will go. Um, one of the things I do love about polychromos is that I do not have to use a lot of um, any kind of real blending method per se other than the colored pencils themselves. I think that is a fantastic thing. Um... I did one earlier that was with Blix, which is, which are wax based and much more like um, Prismacolors. And I did use a um, solvent with that. I used colorless or odorless mineral spirits, also colorless. And when you're using those, I did it over my lines at the very end. And I ended up making sure to go with the lines so that I didn't mess them up and they didn't smear or anything. So just a note, if you are working with a solvent or any kind of blender like that, make sure you go with your lines when you're doing them. Um, this is my emerald green, which is my medium green. And I'm just going to work that all the way down here. Like I said, we're just blocking in color values, so we kind of get the 3D idea in our head of how we want this to go. And it just kind of helps me to think about it, like, you know, this is where the light hits, and then it comes down here, and it's much darker. And then we will shade in at our other parts as we go along. By the way, I do this really, really quick, and it's very light pressure. It's not heavy at all, because, like I said, we just want 
the color in there. Okay, so with Malachite, one of the things is that they have, it's got beautiful, beautiful patterns that you can do in this. So I'm going to be doing a decently simple pattern. And on these two, I will probably do a little bit more difficult patterns. And that just means that it will take more time. So, um, let's see, I had a couple pictures pulled up. You will often see in Malachite um, rings as well as the lines. Um, some cabochons of Malachite will have just straight lines. Others will not. Um, I was thinking that we could do something along this line. And just kind of go from here. Then we'll just kind of see how if we want to repeat that or or what we want to do with it. We can make it come like really far up here. Um, this one is still my emerald green, it's the one I used down here. But there are a lot of lighter rings in Malachite, or a lot of lighter stripes slash rings. So I kind of want to get some of these lighter ones in here. And then we'll work on getting some of these darker ones in here as well. Um, I'm going to go back up and get grab one of these. This is the light green, I believe. Nope, it's the leaf green. Okay, so this is the second one I used, the second lightest. And we're just making the same kind of shape again. And just going in here. I'm still not using a lot of pressure. I am just repeating it and just trying to get... I'm using a little bit um, heavier pressure just because I want to get a decent line in there. And I don't want it to go anywhere when we start putting in some of our shadows and whatnot. Okay, kind of likes that, the way that's going. Um, let's grab one of our darker greens. I have, let's see, for dark greens, I have dark phthalo green. I have deep cobalt green and which one is this? Pine green. Um, for shadows, I also have over here that you can't really see. Cold gray number four. And my black. Which I will use around probably just the edges. Mostly in case I want to get it real, real deep and dark. Um, so let's see. I'll grab the deep cobalt green. And I'll show you, it's, it's pretty dark. But that is one of the beautiful things I think about Malachi is it has very definite, very definite and prominent stripes in it. I think it's a very, very, very pretty stone. I actually have a necklace somewhere with a piece of Malachi in it, along with a piece of lapis, I think. Lapis lazuli. Which is a very, very beautiful, like, royal blue stone. It's got gold stuff in it. Alright, so we're just echoing that same pattern. As you can see. Just kind of picking it out. Um, if you want to do, like, a big, big stripe, we could do that. I'm just coloring a bigger stripe. Uh, 
And then I was just thinking about it. Like down here. Just do like this. And that would be like the beginning of a different pattern. Like if I had a dot down here or something. And I don't want these stripes to go anywhere either. So that's why I'm going over there so many times. Not using a lot of pressure. Just going over them again and again and again. Remember you can make whatever pattern you want. Um, look up pictures of Malachite. Some of them have like really cool patterns like this. And then they just form rings like that. Okay, that's really, really wonky looking. But you get my idea. So. Um, let's grab another green. And keep going. Um, this one's pine green. That's a very, it's a very, mm, greenish green, I guess. Uh, what am I trying to say? More like a olive green. I don't know how much I really like it. But it'll give us some, some differ, differentiations in here. I don't think I like it that much. Which means I'm not going to use a lot. Alright. And then... I had another one. Oh, right. My dark phthalo green. Yeah, I like this one. Let's do a big swatch right here. And then a big swatch down here. All right. So, we have in our stripes now, or for the most part, and you can keep working on your stripes and make as many or as few as you want, and just, you know, look at a reference photo if you want, if that helps you um, get ideas for patterns that you could do with Malachite, and I'm going to start going around and kind of darkening up some of these edges with this one which is the, still the dark phthalo green I don't want my edges white for sure um, our light is coming from this way so all of this is going to be our shadow down here so I'm going to start lightly really lightly actually I want to go a little bit darker so I'm going to grab the deep cobalt green again and start going over really lightly down here and just kind of bringing all the values down. Uh, trying to kind of go with my stripes so I don't want to like mute out any of my stripes or anything. But also need to make those shadows. So, kind of just going along here. And then I'm going to go up here, kind of bring this in a little bit more. I don't want to go up too high. I think I'm already going up too high. Um. This is emerald green. I went back. This will help just bring it in. Make it look not so frazzled, I guess. I want I want the, the area of light to be up here. Um, this up here needs to kind of get pushed down a little bit. Just because it is the uh, edge of the stone. Which means it needs to have a little bit of depth to it. Okay, that one that I didn't really like, where did it go? Pine green. Yeah. This will be a good shadow color. I'm going to use it just up here at the edge. Uh, 
and come down around here with it. I'm still keeping it very, very light. I don't want too much of anything in here. And after you've done some of these shadows, if you want to go in and use your other colors and go across and redefine some of the stripes, you could definitely do that. Um, I'm just trying to get out some of the white. If you want to use a blender, actually, you could use a blender to get out some of your whites. Um, just make sure you blend with the stripes so you don't lose them. I'm kind of losing some of mine, if you can see that. Which I'm okay with if you don't want to lose your stripes. I'm just trying to get the idea of it. You know what I mean? Not a mean jelly bean. See? See how we have that? I like that. Okay. So, um, all I really want to do now is go back in and really make it pop out. You know, pop out. Uh, I also think that we could use a little bit more dulling down right here in the middle. And by dulling down, I mean I don't want the white showing through at all. For mine. Okay, so I'm gonna use. Do I wanna use gray? How dark is my gray? Um, yeah, I can use gray. Um, for shadows, I use gray and sometimes I use black, just depending on what I want. And. Gray and black both help to increase your shadows, which is basically what I'm doing. And I'm not seeing enough of an increase right now. So, I'm using my black. Ooh, that's dark. Gotta be careful. Um, I'm, I'm barely touching the paper right now. Like, I do not want the shadow to go too dark at all. But I do like really high contrast, so I want some of this really dark, but I don't want to go too dark. I think I'm going to switch back to my gray because I'm like scared over here. <laughs> I do not like to go too dark because then I won't be able to bring it back. See, with the gray, I'm kind of able to go a little wonky, and it's okay. So, this is my safe bet. Your shadows, shadows are kind of dark, kind of muted. Get some of the gray back in, in here. There, I like that. Yeah, 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 I like that. I'm um, going to grab, I think this. Up here was just bothering me as being almost too light in this little corner up here. And then you can grab your gray and go around up the top here and get that edge just to go down a little bit farther. I'm probably using like medium pressure I guess with my gray and I don't have a real sharp tip on this if you can see that um yeah it's kind of just blunt that way I can just kind of rub it on top and kind of use it to help blend as well as just you know put a little bit of color on there and then all we really need is our highlight guys I have my favorite little jelly roll here, the which you can't see. Jelly roll, it's an 08, it's made by Sakura, I think, yeah. And a lot of people seem to have problems with these. I, I don't, I just get it going on another piece of paper 
and then I go for it. And remember when you are doing these, your highlights to echo the edge of your stone or your gem. So you want to echo that curve. And I generally do mine in like little parts in case it's like reflection from a window or a highlight from a window where my light is coming in. Because windows get broken up by the little bars that are in them. And just like that, I kind of outline it and then color it in. Um, if your gel pen leaves little streaks in it, it's probably because you might be pushing down too hard. And you might want to lighten up your pressure a little bit. Um, let's see. That's almost good. I kind of messed up. So I take my blender pencil, and this is something that I like to do. Uh, the blender pencil is colorless, the Prismacolor one. And I just gently take away from my jelly roll. I clean it up basically. I don't want it to be. Eh, I don't know how far down I want this. Same over here. I kind of want this to taper out more and faster. So. And then I kind of like the idea that there are other, you know, light sources around. So I generally will do this. Just put like little tiny highlights. You know, itty little bit ones. Because, I mean, there's light bouncing everywhere, not just right there. So... And then I usually play with my highlights a whole bunch because I like to get them perfect. So there you have it, my friends. That's Malachite. And make some really awesome patterns. And show me your Malachite. And happy St. Patrick's Day. Talk to you next time. Bye.